these niggas got me. I hate these niggas more than I got Well, this line certainly takes on a new implication for Kanye these days. What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And I typically want to avoid, in general, talking about Kanye at all at this point. But this was a request by a user named Kanye Easy Goat, so I, I, I get the feeling I wasn't going to be able to convince him to change it. But hey, before we get into the breakdown, if you'd like to support the show or make a request, head on over to ko-fi.com slash rapcritic, where you can donate what you want or request reviews of songs, albums, and movies, as well as get music live stream requests, which, if you just want to chip in something small, is your best bet, since those are the lowest prices right now. Plus, you'll get your request processed the quickest way, since that's the shortest line at the current moment. So get with it, act like you want it, and let's get into this review. So let's talk about Flashing Lights, the fourth single from Kanye's graduation LP back in 2007, when the inflated ego was still just about matching the quality of the music enough for people to give him a pass. And this single is a perfect example of the grandiosity of his music by this point. The instrumentation is big and epic, almost like the strings are gusts of wind filling up the cavernous space left by the open, booming drum track. With the chick on the hook who says flashing lights in an inflection that literally no one would say those words in unless you were drunk at night and just got confronted by a UFO. Are those flashing lights? And of course, we'd be remiss to not mention the music video and the two alternative versions. Now, apparently those vids leaked and weren't meant to be public, but for what it's worth, it kind of felt like it was part and parcel to the late 2000s bigness of a Kanye project. He was so creative and bursting at the seams with ideas, it felt like part of the mystique for there to be even more to the picture of the visual representation for this epic single. And it was like, half kind of cool. Like, don't get me wrong, the German Expressionist version with the confusing but visually striking murder mystery plot was pretty fitting for the song's heightened feel, but the other version was just a kind of basic pitch one that is just about a vapid girl who parties all day and doesn't take life seriously, but it's hard to watch because it's all edited in this eye-irritating picture montage that makes you feel like someone slowed down the frame rate in your eyeballs. But I think it was the allure of the sparseness of the original official video that made it feel like there had to be more to the story just around the corner somewhere. Like, it's just a couple slow motion shots of a woman driving somewhere to burn her clothes and reveal Kanye tied up in the back of a car only for her to lovingly stroke his face right before stabbing the absolute life out of him with a shovel. But just from those moments, you can infer the dynamic of what's going on. Uh, those are probably expensive clothes that he bought for her, but she's lighting him on fire to show how it no longer matters to her. Uh, maybe he played just too many games and went too far this time, so she's setting ablaze the material trappings that he used before in order to purchase her tolerance for his antics. And I say as much because it feels like it's an aspect that ties into the themes of the song's narrative. She don't believe in shooting stars, but she believes Shoes and cars. Immediately we're set up with a character who isn't fond of lofty goals or aspirations, just wealth and status symbols. Which floors in the new apartment? From the store's department. Now, I've heard it said that this song isn't just about a relationship between two people. It could also be seen as a metaphor for his relationship with his fans. And while I can't see that in some aspects of the second verse, the first verse just has too much detail that makes it sound like an actual specific person for it to be metaphorical. Like, does his fan base collectively like wood floors in their new apartments? Like, no, that doesn't make sense. That's too specific to not be about a particular person. No, it seems like it's just the narrative of a girl enjoying her new life with her rich rapper boyfriend who can get her anything with some fun wordplay strewn through out. You more like a love to start shit. I'm Uh oh, but it sounds like there might be some trouble in paradise. Cause while he just wants to chill out and go on vacation, she's apparently starting all the drama in the relationship. Which, knowing Kanye by this point makes me a little skeptical about the idea that it's her who's enjoying perpetuating the drama, but uh, but okay, it's the narrative of the song. Wait, what what if your favorite author's Stephen King though? Not a lot of breathtaking exotic vistas in Upper New England. But okay, the point is that, ah, I'm showing you such a nice pampered life, uh, what's there to complain about? But then this next couple of lyrics happens. She in the mirror dancing so sleazy, I get a call like, where are you, Jeezy? And it's like, oh, well, everything was going just good though, wasn't it? Well, where did he go? Then he says this line. And try to hit you with the old wacky. And for years I had no idea what the hell this meant. It wasn't until recently that I found an interview where he explained that it was old Chicago slang people don't really use anymore that means to fake someone out, uh, like to act like you were gonna do something or be somewhere, but then not do it. So in context, what he's saying is, I get a call like, where are you, DZ? And try to hit you with the old wop till I get flashed by the paparazzi. So, she tried to call him to find out where he went, because apparently he just fucking peaced out without saying anything, but then the paparazzi caught up with him, which gave away his location. And, you know, sure, it's gotta be annoying that TMZ is constantly trying to capture your every step on film, but it's kinda hard for me to have sympathy if the thing you get caught doing is tiptoeing out on your girlfriend, because 
the, the implication is that you're doing something she probably wouldn't like if she saw you doing it. Hey, babe, so a reporter just caught me cheating with another woman, and I, I am just as angry as you are about the fact that we just don't let people have any privacy anymore. And then, of course, it ends with this line in the first verse. I got flashed by the paparazzi. Hey, these niggas got me. I hate these niggas more Now I know, it's a typical hyperbolic Kanye lyric, just saying, oh, these people are so shitty, I'm gonna group them as even worse than the most agreed upon worst people in the world. But now when I hear it, I can't help but side-eye the intention behind Kanye downplaying the objective shittiness of Nazis. I hate these niggas more than a Nazi. Although if anything, it just sort of proves how solipsistic he's always kind of been. You think Nazis are bad? Well, what about people who take pictures of you when you're famous? I mean, as far as my life experience has told me, that's the real scourge threatening all of our freedoms, am I right? And yes, it's true, we didn't have proof that his brain was fully melted by the internet until around 2006, but Kanye's always been a little conspiracy-brained. And I know the government administer AIDS. So it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, is all I'm saying. Yeah, no, we, we really didn't. But hey, it's all good now, because apparently Kanye West watched 21 Jump Street, which made him not anti-Semitic because he liked Jonah Hill's acting in it. Th th this is a real post he made. I, I who says entertainment can't change minds? <laughs> How the hell is this the real world? Uh, back to the song, though. So, so we get into the second verse, where he mentions the fact that they've been growing apart. I know it's been a while, sweetheart, we hardly talk, I was doing my thing. But then he brings up something that she did that he didn't like. And if somebody would have told me a month ago, front and low, yo, I wouldn't want to know. And I always get stuck here. Because I'm like, wait, but told you what? Because the last thing we get before that is him mentioning that he misses her. Hey, babe, hey, Clay, you've been all on my brain. And if somebody would have told me a month ago, front and low, yo. But the next lyric is him acting all appalled about something she apparently did. And and instead of elaborating on it at all, he just pretty much says the same thing again, but with less clear wording. And, like, I think I get what he means here. But when you put the two lines together and how they repeat but don't really say anything new, it comes across like a filler line that could have been replaced with something that actually gave us a bit to chew on in terms of actual detail on how things went sour. And I'd let it go as just a passing vagueness that's just supposed to be alluding to something he doesn't want to mention, but then when he doubles up on such a nothing phrase like that, it especially comes off like you're padding out lines just to get to the end of the verse. Because I'm over here like, I don't know, Kanye, what is so bad that it's causing you to have this exaggerated reaction? But then, it must not have been too bad, because by the end, you're still making a bunch of comparisons about how you still miss her to varying levels of cheesiness. I'm kind of like Katrina with no FEMA, like Martin with no Tina. But you know, it's not the first time Kanye's done this weirdly specific thing where he needs a line for how much he needs someone but couldn't choose between the actually kind of clever comparison and the corny one, so he just kind of went with both. I'm just trying to say the way school needs to use the way Kathleen needs to like, dude specifically sped up his flow just to make sure that corny shit fit in there. I'm just saying, hey Mona Lisa, come home. You know you can't roam without Caesar. But wait, you're talking all this comeback baby stuff now, but weren't you the one who kept dipping out on her without warning like the fucking Batman to her Commissioner Gordon? And it sounds like you're just thrown off by the fact that she now has you thinking. So that's what that feels like. Overall though, I'd give this a 4 out of 5. I enjoy how he experiments with his flow in a way that embraces and dances around the openness of the track's lush instrumentation, but unfortunately, the looser flow only gives you more time to think about what's being said, and if it comes off as filler bars, those linger and take up more time in a way that puts a bit of a blemish on the experience of the track, because the vagueness often detracts from the storytelling and makes it harder to be invested in the emotional stakes of what's happening. It really keeps the picture from being clear and solidifying it as an unmitigated classic in my eyes, but it's still a solid enough track regardless. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell afterwards because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations where you can see episodes early and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but sometimes I totally like your song. I just, you know, have a couple notes, you know? I do. It's no big deal. Yeah.